Welcome back, everybody, to the channel. We are just a little over a week away from the NFL Draft. Uh, a few more divisions to go. I'll be sure to get through them by next week. Uh, for now, we are going to the NFC North. Uh, again, the, the, the offseason was more quiet. Uh, more Most of the noise coming from uh, Minnesota and Green Bay. But obviously, we're starting going from last to first. Same order as always. So let's start with the Detroit Lions. And... Uh, <laughs> The only real loss of note was a edge player named Jalen Reeves Mabin. Again, it's more depth than anything else, but the Lions will have their shot at a depth, at a great edge rusher in this draft. If Jacksonville passes on Aiden Hutchinson, which I don't know if they will, or maybe Kayvon Thibodeau, or maybe they can take a guy at the bottom of the first round because they have two first round picks this year thanks to the trade with the Rams. The, the Lions have a lot of options here. Uh, they added Mike Hughes, who I think is a decent corner. That's a nice corner add. Uh, Chris Board from Baltimore, who's a decent inside linebacker. And then DJ Chark, who I like as a talented wide receiver. He's not spectacular, but, you know, he'll be an upgrade for them. Uh, uh, they had the emergence of Amon Ross St. Brown last year. I don't think the Lions should or could take a quarterback second overall. I know people keep saying Malik Willis. I'm coming more around to the idea that it is probably going to happen, but at the same time, uh, to me, I would just be fine rolling with Goff for another year, and then just, uh, you know, after Goff is done, uh, he, they'll probably still won't be very good. Uh, then guess what? You'll have your shot at uh, younger Stroud next year. But to me, I think I like what the Lions are doing in terms of building a culture. It's a significant improvement over the toxic place that was Matt Patricia. Uh, I like what the Lions are building, and in my opinion, they should just stick with it. You have a plan, stick to it, don't stray from it. Uh, to me, it's just uh, continue building what you have now. I would keep building the roster they have now and then get the quarterback later. Uh, then again, if they do take Malik Willis or uh, Carson Strong or Kenny Pickett or Matt Corral or whoever they decide, whoever they desire, they're not going to have to play right away. This is actually a decent situation for a quarterback to grow because he doesn't have to play right away because they can have Goff for another year or two. Goff sells another year left on the contract after this year, so they can just you know let this play out and then go with the rookie if they want to. Uh, they don't have to rush anything. Detroit's in a decent position. They didn't do too much this free agency because they didn't have to. They were smart. They recognized that right now their position is just to keep building for the future. Don't rush anything right now. Don't spend too much money. Use that cap space wisely. And I thought they did, personally. I thought they did a good job building their roster as it is now. Uh, so that's it for Detroit. Not much to talk about. But then again, I think it's more what they're building rather than what they just paid money for. Um, then we're talking about another team that kind of went through a chaotic offseason. Uh, this is the result of signing a lot of bad deals. You can just look at the ungodly amount of releases they had. Now, we'll talk about their gains first, the Chicago Bears. Um, Lucas Patrick, a decent guard. They lost James Daniels, which is going to hurt because he was kind of the bedrock of a pretty bad offensive line otherwise. So, you ask me... Um, Lucas Patrick is okay. He's really a backup guard. Didn't do too much in terms of a starting role, but in terms of replacing James Daniels, I don't know about that. Uh, Byron Pringle. Um, the Bears have lacked a legitimate wide receiver weapons. They lost Allen Robinson. He was just flat out pissed, and he never did anything with them. Uh, Byron Pringle should be a decent speed threat in the slot. Same with Equinemius St. Brown. He didn't do too much in Green Bay. We'll see how he pans out. Uh, Nicholas Morrow, decent linebacking pickup from, uh, from Vegas. I just think the Bears should have done more to address the line. Their line was just flat out awful last year. It's been awful for a good while now. Uh, to me, uh, and to make matters worse, they could have taken a tackle in this pretty stacked tackle class with a top 10 pick, but they traded that pick to the Giants, and that pick ended up being sixth, uh, ended up being, um, sixth overall. So have fun with that knowledge. Or was it seventh overall? It was out of the sixth or the seventh overall pick they traded. Doesn't matter. It was still a bad trade. They ended up giving a top 10 pick to the Giants, so... Good job, Bears. <laughs> um, they added some decent pieces, but not enough where I can say they're making massive strides. Um, 
In terms of key losses, Akeem Hicks is probably on his way out. I think he's his time is done here. Same with Eddie Goldman. So that's two premium players on your front seven gone in an instant. Uh, James Daniels is gone too, who is the bedrock of what was, again, an otherwise bad offensive line. Allen Robinson is gone. That was just a bad relationship. It never worked out. Bilal Nichols, another premium player on that front seven. He's gone too. Uh, Denny Trevathan was a decent linebacker. For, he was a good linebacker for them, but I think he's just kind of near that point in his career where he's no longer what he was. So, yeah, I think he's just done. Uh, Tariq Cohen, to me, their running back situation was always weird. I think David Montgomery is the premier back in that system, but I thought him and Cohen made a nice duo, but they never used Cohen much except in special teams, and he didn't like that. Now, Artie Burns just never was what he was hyped to be as a first-round corner. Pittsburgh let him go for a reason, and I think he kind of just showed the same thing here in Chicago. Uh, Andy Dalton was probably never going to stay beyond this year. Justin Fields is their future, but I don't see them investing enough for me to say I think they're truly building around Fields. I think they still don't they don't know what they are. The Bears have a huge identity crisis. They're still lacking uh, premier talent on the line where it's needed. Uh, I imagine if he can stay healthy, Tevin Jenkins will be the premier starter this year. At, I say left tackle, or maybe right tackle. I don't know. It's just, I, I don't get what they're doing. To me, they shed more than they added. And again, and they don't have the picks to make a, to make a, up some of the holes in their roster. So it just feels like they're kind of just hoping things work out okay. Maybe they're they're rebuilding essentially at least that's what they should be doing i just don't see a plan here uh i don't blame ryan poles though because pace left them in a bad spot he signed a lot of bad contracts um i also got to mention the khalil mack thing i literally did not have room for him on the dozens of key ads uh, losses but yeah i'm gonna add a huge one uh khalil mack being traded uh health concerns obviously were a huge thing um but that was like the first time he had any injury concerns he'd been relatively healthy in chicago pretty much missed no, no games so their defensive front is pretty much gone their premier edge rushers are all they're, they're gone essentially so i don't know what their plans are moving forward but man they better they better find a way to compensate because this was a bad offseason for the Bears. They don't want to hear that, but it is reality. <laughs> um, now we'll go to a team that finished second, even though they're pretty much just running on a treadmill at this point, uh, the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, they're running on a treadmill at this point. They extended Kirk for another year, which they kind of snuck that in during the whole Brady announced he's coming back uh, announcement. It's like, hey, Brady announced he's coming back. Let's just sneak in this move that nobody's going to like. Um, in terms of key losses, Everson Griffin, he's just kind of been bouncing around at this point. On the Vikings, off the Vikings, on the Vikings, off the Vikings. He's been on and off. Uh, he's never settled in. Uh, he's a decent defensive player. I like him. Just, I don't know why he just keeps bouncing around. <laughs> um, Anthony Barr... I think it's just uh, the end of an era. I think the Vikings are admitting, look, this defense wasn't good enough. We got to, you know, start fresh, whatever that means for them. It's kind of a refresh for them on defense, especially now that Zimmer is gone. Uh, Xavier Woods is gone too. One of their better safeties, he's gone. Chad Baby, I, I think they're just having some, this is a depth loss at uh, wide receiver. Same for Tyler Conklin. Uh, Sheldon Richardson's been kind of, one, he's in the same situation as Griffin. He's just kind of bounced around at this point. That said, I thought they had some decent ads. Uh, they re-signed Patrick Peterson for a year, which, I mean, if the whole Gladney situation got ugly, but if you can draft a corner in this pretty, in a decent-ish, more top-heavy corner class, but you can get a first-round corner, it's a decent start. Um, Zadarius Smith was a nice ad. He's a good edge rusher. He's a decent, uh, good edge rusher. So that's a nice snipe from Green Bay, of all places. Jordan Hicks is a, and Harrison Phillips, those are decent ass to the front seven. I think they'll do nicely, especially if the defensive coaching is at least somewhat similar to Zimmer's because say what you want about Zimmer, but at least the dude could coach defense, uh, even though it kind of wore off at the end there. Nate Harrison, as a Denver fan, I can tell you firsthand, a dude's a decent player. Uh, he was a decent corner last year. He filled in nicely uh, with the Broncos. Uh, so I think uh, Minnesota's going to like him. 
can't say he's starter material just yet, but I think they will like him. Don't get Jesse Davis, though. Uh, there's a reason that the Dolphins were so eager to let him go once they got Teron Armstead. Um, now, Darisaw worked out great for them, drafting Christian Darisaw. I think they need, and they drafted Garrett Bradbury. I think they've got some good young pieces. Keep adding to it. Maybe you spend that first round pick on one of the many, many first round caliber linemen in this draft uh, because their line is so close to being complete. I can feel it. Uh, I think their most important ads are going to come during the draft. I can't say beyond the shadow of a doubt that I think that the Vikings are going to be a playoff team next year. I don't really think so. A lot of it will depend on how O'Connell does. That said, it was a decent offseason for them. They did fill in some holes. Uh, their defense kind of just shed a lot of aging players. It's kind of a reset button for the Vikings. Uh, interested to see what happens at quarterback after this year. I don't think they'll draft somebody because I, I'll say I am legitimately curious to see how Kellen Mond develops. He was viewed as one of the more underrated prospects in this draft, and I thought he was fine as far as second round quarterbacks go. Uh, I don't think he's fantastic, but maybe he could be something. It, it's a big if there. But now let's go to the team that all NFC North fans hate out of everybody, except for uh, all NFC North fans hate them because they can never beat them. The Green Bay Packers. Um, disappointing end last year, so they're going to look to kind of right the ship and get back this year. Uh, I think they could get back to the NFC Championship game. The NFC is extraordinarily weak. It's extremely top-heavy. All you got to go through really is Stafford and Brady, and you'll make it. Um, but let's talk about what... Uh, but the Packers did the first big one. They re-signed Aaron Rodgers to a four-year extension. To me, it's more of a two-year deal. So, obviously, it's going to be a year-by-year -year thing. As in the interview with uh, Tom Grossi, the Packers president, uh, Mark Murphy, clearly said it's a year-by-year -year thing at this point with Aaron Rodgers. Don't blame them for taking that scenario. Um, I think maybe just two more years until Aaron may either calls it, maybe calls it quits. I think he's just going to retire a Packer. Um, but that's a huge sign for them. It keeps their window open. Uh, Rasul Douglas, that was a really good signing for them. He was underrated. Uh, they poached him off the Cardinals practice squad, and he became a starter for them and played really well last year. I thought that was a great signing for the Packers, getting back Rasul Douglas. Uh, Devondre Campbell, uh, liked that too. He was another underrated signing that averged out of nowhere. Great add to the linebacking core. Uh, Robert Tanyan is back. I think that he will he pairs nicely with Josiah DeGuerra, though we need to see more out of DeGuerra. I thought Tanyan was going to have a breakout year last year until obviously he got injured. But yeah, good to see Tanyan back in the fold. Uh, then they addressed one of their wide receiver needs with Sammy Watkins. I would still draft somebody. It's a deep wide receiver class. Take one of them, please. One of them with your... Top, with one of the top 60 picks that you have. You have the first pick in the a first round pick and a second round pick. Use one in a wide receiver. I am begging you. Uh, Watkins, he's decent. He has health concerns. Uh, his consistency is not fantastic. But he should fill in nicely. I think he'll be more akin to what Marquez Valdez Scantley was as opposed to what Devontae Adams was. But Watkins will be more of a speed threat. Which, uh, let's go over to their losses. Uh, Devontae Adams was the big one. Obviously, I don't think they... <clears throat> they tried to pay him. They offered him everything that the Raiders did. But he just wanted to go to the Raiders. So, uh, they traded him. They got a decent-ish haul back for him. I'll be interested to see what they do with it. Um, Zadarius Smith... Uh, that's a loss of the front to the edge rush, but I will say this Rashawn Gary came into his own a lot last year finally living up to that first round pedigree He really did show out in that San Francisco game So uh, in the playoffs, so I'll be interested to see how Rashawn Gary does since he'll probably since he'll be stepping into the premier role Marquez Valdez Scantling, uh, that's a decent. That's a good speed threat. He's off their team now um, But uh, I think now Mari Rogers and Alan Lazard are gonna have to fill in a lot more Maybe they draft somebody with some good decent speed like maybe like a Sky Moore or a Chris Olave That would be a nice ad for them uh, Billy Turner good starting tackle. He's off their team now. He went to go join Nathaniel Hack in Denver um, 
I th that'll be another thing that they might want to address is their tackle position. Unless, I don't know, maybe they're comfortable enough with putting one of the guys that filled in last year with Bakhtiari when he was out when he was injured. Um, Equinemius St. Brown never really developed in Green Bay. He never turned into what they wanted him to be. It's just a more of a depth loss than anything else. Um, but the Packers, uh, I think they're still good enough to win the North. I think they're good enough to compete for the NFC crown. A lot of that will depend on the health of the line, though, because Bakhtiari really missed a lot of key games last year, but they still managed to, to win without him. So I think a lot of that is going to depend on the, the health of the line and how the defense plays. We know that Rodgers is going to do his thing. We know Rodgers is going to light it up. We know that Rodgers is going to play like an MVP, but, you know, um, a lot of this is going to depend on how healthy they are. I think they can beat LA. I think they can beat Tampa. We'll see it uh, in playoff time, but um, that'll do it for the NFC North. A relatively quiet offseason. Not too many huge splash moves made other than the Aaron Rodgers drama, but that'll settle that. Uh, we're going to do the NFC East next. Really interesting there if you hate the Cowboys. If you hated the Cowboys, then you are really going to like... Um, you're really going to like what happened there. But that'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a couple of days. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to be able to look out in the next one. And until then, see you guys later.